Well, starting another movie series. This one is Movies About Movies. <music> movies About Movies. There are so many of them, and so many of them are good. My short list has more than a dozen. It's going to take me all summer to work through the list. Longer if I don't get started, so let's get started. This week, the first two, Living in Oblivion and Day for Night. Both of them make me laugh. One of them also makes me cry every time I watch it. Now, if you squint, they're actually both the same movie. An insider's look at a director struggling to shoot a film against technical obstacles, cast insecurities, conflicting agendas, egos, bickering, romantic entanglements, and above all, against a finite budget and schedule. Money and time just keep draining away. DiCillo's picture is the smaller of the two. It's angrier and funnier. Takes us inside the world of low-budget, no-budget independent film. YouTube filmmakers probably will relate very well. Truffaut's picture is bigger in cast, concept, budget, setting, running time, and in spirit. I'll talk about that in my next video. Today, it's Living in Oblivion, written and directed by Tom DiCillo. The film has a dead simple structure. Basically, it's three extended sketches, all about shooting scenes from a movie that is also called Living in Oblivion. And those sketches are all variation of the standard making a movie comedy sketch you've seen all your life. Director sets up a shot, calls action, something goes wrong. Oh, cut. Everyone resets for another take and action. Cut. I'm recording here. And again and again, all to the director's mounting exasperation. Now, for a sketch, you find a punchline at a blackout. But to make that a movie, you need to go deeper. And DiCillo does. He takes it to levels beyond sketch comedy by exploring the psychological and interpersonal issues that throw up most of the interference. The cast and crew all have agendas that threaten to hijack the director's vision. Catherine Keener plays Nicole, an actress playing an actress who plays the female lead in the film within the film. We saw Keener last year in Captain Phillips. Her husband at the time of this film was Dermot Mulroney, who plays Wolf, the cameraman. The on-screen director is Nick Reeve, played by Steve Buscemi. Buscemi is an actor of unparalleled neurotic intensity. I think in that he's rivaled only by the late Don Knotts. Reeve's mounting frustration duels hilariously with his need to stay calm and work with his cast and crew to get the picture made. And one of Reeve's biggest challenges is his lead actor, Chad Palomino. He's played by James Legros. Chad mounts a series of ego-driven, increasingly bizarre and sabotaging suggestions. Historical note, DiCillo just a few years previously had directed a star called Brad Pitt in a film called Johnny Suede. Is Chad based on Brad? Well, you watch Living in Oblivion and decide for yourself. Hint, DiCillo actually offered the part to Brad Pitt first. Another challenge facing the fictional director is a complex web of romantic longings among cast and crew, some requited, some not, some consummated, some not, all distracting people from the task at hand. Are there triangles? You betcha. Will they make you squirm? Maybe. The third act, by the way, features the screen debut of Peter Dinklage. Today he's an A-lister on TV as Tyrion Lannister in Game of Thrones, and on the big screen is Dr. Bolivar Trask in X-Men, Days of Future Past. There he's the evil scientist behind the relentless, invincible, mutant-killing, flying robots. Who does Peter Dinklage play here? Not that. You can see him at the start of his career. Now, considering the script grew out of an impulse of anger and frustration, it's remarkable to see how DiCillo transcends simple caricature, gives us real characters, emotional weight, and depth and resonance. The cliché is that the director's in charge, barking orders, and everyone falls into line. Well, maybe it worked that way for DeMille, but DiCillo shows us a much more intricate dance among collaborators. I'm not going to talk about the more interesting twists because, well, you know how I feel about spoilers. Much better if you let the surprises catch you by surprise. Next time, day for night. Until next time, I'm Mikola. <laughs> DVD Extras. DiCillo's blog has the story of how he came to write, cast, and finance the film Shades of Ed Wood. Anyone who put up some money got a part. Link in the description. Want more movies? Here's my previous series of five films. Here's a relative newcomer to the five film tag. Talking Down the Sun. Sushan started this new channel just for that. Bye now. I think I'm done.